What's up, guys? It is Ted here with Bio and Wix, and uh, yeah, I just did a recording not too long ago and realized that my mic wasn't on. <laughs> Silly me. So I'm gonna have to record all over again. Anyways, um, yeah, basically, what a unexciting weekend. Very unexciting weekend. Um, well, yeah, very unexciting weekend. Um, there was a couple things that you know did pop up and grow and and. You know, but uh, it wasn't anything uh, exciting, I guess you could say, is the 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 word of the day. Exciting, exciting, exciting. No, um, but uh, but this is all about smart money. So smart money is all about institutional investing, how they affect the markets, things like that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's not like you're a typical, you know, you know, technical analysis to where if you have, you know, follow this trend line and trade off of it or here's a harmonic and uh, this is how you can use it in this way. No, it's about more about like, uh, hey, uh, here's where liquidity is. This is probably where uh, your you know, institutional investors understand where retail traders put their stop losses and, and buy limits and whatever, and they're gonna attack that. And, um, and take you out and, and whatnot, or they're they're gonna you know save their uh, their profits from this, and how are they gonna do that? Well, they're gonna hold on to it and then short it, um, you know, in the futures and instead, and uh, you, know, you know things like that. So it is more about how realistic rather than uh, some odd you know head and shoulder theory or something like that that actually never sometimes works out, but sometimes it doesn't. So. Anyways, uh, since that's what it's about, if that's kind of thing you can open your mind to, uh, what I would say is go ahead and subscribe to this channel, uh, like it please, and also share it with people who may want to understand something like this. So, first up, let's just go ahead and head over to Crypto Market Cap. So, of course, we still have the uh, regulars up here as top number one, number two, number three. Um, and if we were to check out what the week's winners were, um, let's go ahead and hit this seven day one. Uh, my computer, not m my internet being really slow, I should say, not my computer. Um, I feel like I click on it like a couple of times and then it'll flip back and forth because it's still uh, taking time. There we go. So, uh, a coin called Reserve Rights. Yes, Reserve Rights. I am not exactly for sure what this coin is. Uh, I've never heard of it before. Um, not for sure if it's new or if it's been around for a while. Um, I guess I could click on it and find out more, but uh, I'm not really going to. Uh, if you want to know more, I guess you can click on it. Next up, XRP. Of course, we saw that. Um, that was trending on Twitter for a couple days, to be honest. Um, and uh, I even threw out my uh, theory as to what could be happening next with XRP. Uh, as to where is and you know the next. I guess you could say pivot point is as to where it may turn around or, or you know, whatnot, um, or wh where the the next low would be. I think before moving upwards. Um, next is compound. Uh, we had some Algorand. I threw that one out there as well. Um, that was another one I caught. Um, I so I caught profits on XRP and Algorand this week. Iota. I did not expect, or else I would have. Um, probably looked into that one too and then uh, quant uh, continuously surprising me every day uh, all the way up to 119 dollars now um it's well, it, i think it's been around there for a while but i'm not really for sure i haven't really kept up with quant i remember when it was when it was really really young and it first came out and i, I should have bought it then just like some like one the only one that I ever caught that like actually made a huge huge jump was solana I you know I caught it when it was twenty dollars before the jump, and I bought like five of them, and uh, I let go of them. Three of them at like one nineteen, and like the other two at like one hundred and seventy five or something like that. So that's like the only ones I actually made like huge, huge profits off of. Everything else has been like you know, the futures profits, you know, here and there, the, the gains I that I'll make. And that's been about it. Um. Uh, yeah, so the rest of them, as you can see, um, yeah, Crow, Stellar. I'm actually surprised Stellar is still even on this list. I don't even know what it. I, I just don't get Stellar. Um, uh, eight made a little bit of a gain. 
and yeah, that's 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 kind of where we are with uh, you know as far as the rankings are concerned. Um, trying to think of anything that came out new this week that uh, that we should be watching out for. I did want to see where ERG is on this list, so um, because it did make that huge run, but then again, it fell. It fell really, really hard. So if I'm able to. Actually, in flux to I come on now. I have no idea what this thing's even doing right now. You know what? What we can do is we can just look at it. How about that? Why don't we just look at it at the charts or if we're just wasting time? So let's go ahead and move on to the charts. So first, what I pulled up is uh, good old Ethereum, since it's uh, after it's been on its merge, um, and nobody's been able to mine it. Um, what it has done is it's continued to do what I thought it would do, which is move down. And I did a bit about this yesterday. If you watched yesterday's video where I did the uh, the monthly um, analysis of it, is so if you can go back and watch that video, uh, it's really short. Um, but it left a, a full, uh, like in the month of December of 2020, um, with uh, January being on this side and February being on this side, it left a big gap in between where the wicks didn't touch between December or January and, and February. So that, that being said, that is what is called the fair value gap, and that is what this big whole brown rectangle is. And generally, the price likes to attract to these um once they i guess once they get close enough and you know after it took off and you know we had that huge run in, in 2020 um then you know it started falling back down and it started filling in all these fair value gaps that it had left behind um and now it's getting down to the lowest of the low ones um which is getting down toward as you can see here down here where it says 88.6 percent that is pretty much at the bottom of the um uh, the month you know when i did the monthly the, the you know i did the, the bottom of the monthly to the top the very very top the all-time high of ethereum uh, of the most recent wave so that 88.6 percent is um basically it w within that range so d i personally i think what we're going to see is it's going to slowly but surely float its way down um into this fair you know, mon monthly uh, fair value i don't say I, w I actually wouldn't think slowly because you do have this right here um in this if you ever okay, if you've ever watched me talk about um the um, market maker buy or sell model um, generally, whenever you see one of these, then it, this kind of sits on top of it, and then it'll probably drop right below it, um, because for some reason, it doesn't like to, prices don't like to consolidate in one, the same area, um, for too long. So, even though this one and these kind of did, I really don't see however long this one consolidated for since we're on a four hour chart. That was, you know, quite a few, that was like, what, a month almost? Jeez, uh, I don't see it doing that as well. I don't see it consolidating for a month. I think it probably drops soon. And I think probably maybe by the end of the year, hopefully, um, maybe within the next month or two, um, if we finally get to a pivot point it'll probably bounce up and then bounce down again and then that's why i'm thinking a year we may finally start seeing um or by the end of the year finally start seeing it start to move up again but other than that i really don't see uh, much coming out of ethereum as far as positivity goes i mean there is some you know bands above that or i, I should say one band above that does have liquidity it could poke up above that um, but then again it would probably end up just entering into this fair value gap and then falling back down so you can see there is another fair value gap over here 
but I think it'll probably, it, I mean, it's with, within a monthly one. I think it'll probably take care of the monthly one before it is concerned about the four hour one. There's a monthly one, and there's also a weekly one down here that I just clicked. So that's the weekly one that from a very, very, very long time ago that is within the monthly one. So our fling is going to be floating down here, trying to fill these gaps first before um, we continue to move on up, hitting that probably hitting this 88.6%, uh, this 60. So I would say. Yeah, we could get as low as uh, 650 maybe, could even spike down even further um, before we start moving up. So that's what I got for you on good old Ethereum. As far as good old Bitcoin is concerned. If it's going to pull up. There we go. I think I had the wrong mark up there. So give it, you know, you gotta give my computer some time to load. Forgive me. It takes a minute. I could just have too many things loaded at once too, who knows? It still didn't show up. What did it? What, what in the world? Is it? Okay, I was gonna say. So, yeah, actually, this was my prediction quite quite a bit ago. Um, coming down here to the four hour fair value gap, and then coming back up, reaching within this four hour fair value gap, and it looks like I stayed in there for about halfway. Made a smaller one down here, the fifteen minute, filled it, and then after that took off um and then, then this four hour for value gap has been mitigated already so that's why i just stopped it there and you can see it created equal highs after it created equal highs uh, that green line that you see that i have um, i think if you have that on the daily um it may be where the discount price is um uh, oh no, if you put the, the fib upside down, um, that is where the discount price is, I think. So that would be like the 61.8% um, going from here down to the opposite end. So it runs back up to the, the infamous 61.8% and drops from there. And as it's dropped from there, it's uh, looking like icicles. Um, doesn't know what it wants to do, but also it's in the same situation as, um, kind of in the same situation as Ethereum, to where as there is another large fairly m uh, monthly fair value gap just below it, and I'm afraid we are going to dip down into that. I think a lot of people are thinking that this is resistance. This is the probably the lowest we're gonna go. We're probably gonna see a lot of buyers, a lot of retail people trying to buy here. Um, but this is where you're going to see the smart money people start pressing pr pressing down uh, probably on the futures uh, market as well as um, um, I don't know if there's any options or anything like that. Yeah, there is. There is Bitcoin mini options. I'm sure the options market is probably uh, overwhelmed with something like that. Uh, we can actually check it out in just a second. Um, let me pull that pull that up somewhere else really quick. Um, but well, and when we'll, we'll see what the uh, institutions are doing as far as the price is concerned about that. Um, Actually, let's just go ahead and just head on over there now. Let's click on that one. So what I use for that to 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 get into that kind of thing is barchart.com. And we, what we can do is we can select a commodity, and it should have both Bitcoin Mini and Ethereum Mini. 
if it will let let me select it as you can see it's gold and it's down and that's what I kind of predicted I threw out a trading view um, insight for gold saying it would go down um, there we let me see last again gold silver blah, 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 blah. where is there it is US dollar index Bitcoin micro So click on Bitcoin Micro. What it's going to do it is going to give you the um, overview, kind of, of what the options um, look like. Let me see here. So, um, do, 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 what's the volume? Okay, eleven eight hundred. Open interest seventeen thousand. Jeez. Got a lot of people betting on this month right now. And then once you click on the month, it should give you a chart. Let me see here. So tick size five points or fifty cents per contract. Ooh. Contract size, 0.1 Bitcoin. Okay. So that's micro. So that's still not that bad. So that would be what? Every $1,800 it drops, you'd make 50 cents or something like that. So it depends on how many contracts you buy. Depends on how much you'd make. So, let's see here. Seasonal chart, as you can see, it looks like this is this year, and this was last year. Or was it last year? I'm trying to, trying to figure out what the difference is in these two. Oh, here we go. Uh, Bitcoin micro average price change chart. Five prior September contracts. Oh, okay. So every five prior September contracts. Gotcha. So the price change. So usually September is going up as to where this September it has been going down. That's that's that. Okay. I'm understanding it now. Okay. We're we're, we're learning together, guys. We're learning together. All right, so this would be the uh, chart you'd click on. And then when you click on this chart, it should give you uh, what, I for, well what I first do is change the, the candles because um, it, it just gives you the line candles as to where I like to have the open close candles. Just like that. And down below, it should have volume. Okay. So you can see that the volume as to where people started and uh, more or less this is when a lot of the trade started coming in was during August. Looks like August is when we started getting the September contracts. Right. And then so what I like to do now is go up here and click add study. And then when you're at add study, hit see a webm and you should get commitment to traders. And this will show you your commercial speculator. So that is your institutions, your large, large accounts. Um, and then it says large speculators, and that's going to be more like your hedge funds, mutual fund people, like you know, um, I don't even know if uh, you know Edward Jones or you know those kind of people can can trade crypto as far as like the sec regulations are concerned oh yeah i guess they could consider well i guess anywhere there is a uh you know licensed you know futures um place which there is in td ameritrade and charles schwab i know that i'm not for sure about edward jones um but uh anywhere there there is licensed futures um yes you can trade these and uh, i guess that's where they get these accounts from so as you can see 
uh, from the commitment of traders what we have here uh, we go back to the commercial is red right so the commercial is red and they are actually adding oh, shorts they're adding shorts uh, so what does that tell me that tells me um, there is going to be probably uh, a, a good short coming soon but then right after that we're going to see a bounce back we're going to see a bounce back along guarantee it as if I mean if, if they're going short now ahead of time I mean if they're, if they're starting their shorts here and it's adding more and adding more and adding more and adding more and it's just going sideways that tells me we're going to see a large short coming soon that's what that tells me so that kind of confirms what i've been saying um, if we go back over to the charts and <laughs> i mean if it's just if it's just going this way like i said throughout the month of september and they're all they're doing is adding shorts the entire time and it's not going anywhere I'm sure there's going to be a whoom, a huge drop right there. And that's that's what I'm thinking. We're going to see a huge drop. It probably drop all the way back down to about 14,000 maybe. It could get down there. It could just hit consequential encroachment, which is halfway through, which is about, you know, almost a little bit less than 16,000 and then start bouncing its way back up. But with what we're seeing in commercials, um yeah it doesn't look too pretty that we're going to be seeing uh you know because they're the i mean if if they're if they have that fat pack of that fat of pockets and they're betting on bitcoin going that short my guess is it is going to go short all right um let's see what else is next next i'm going to check up on my favorite xmr monero and of course it is on the i don't know why this put it on the wrong layout I never had it on this layout just all of a sudden oh I know what I did I because I finally got my my name changed on uh, trading view from my like nickname thing you know to where I'd be trading to the actual uh, you know, podcast name, the buys and wicks. So that's how you can find me on Trading View now. So if you actually click up here, um, you can see I am bodies and wicks now, instead of the stupid name it was earlier. Um, why it's showing Bitcoin again? I have no idea. Whenever I just clicked on XMR. And I go to USDT and I go to KuCoin and I go to KuCoin because that's where I trade the futures of XMR on. Now XMR did, looks like, so it has fulfilled, it looks like this for value gap. Yeah, oh, it looks like it's got, okay, so it's ran up, came into this for value gap up here that it created. Looks like it has mitigated all of that, dropped, and then I, once it came back up, it hit the, well, here's a bearish order block up here, um, but there was also an opening right here, I think, of another I forgot what that was. I have that line right there for maybe on a daily thing. It's probably on a daily thing or a weekly thing. I'm not too sure, but that's why I had that there. And that's why I thought XMR would be dropping from there. Pretty much the same thing as I did from, from Bitcoin. And sure enough, it dropped all the way through. And it looks like it has hit the bottom. Hit the bottom of that fair value gap. Now, to be honest, I am not a hundred percent sure where th what this fair value gap is from. Oh yeah, it looks like it came from here. It probably came from 
the daily. Yep. It's exactly where it came from. So it came from the daily. So it has made it, so again, fair value gaps when price goes through them or whenever they're, it's created price likes to fulfill them so it fills it up this way came down filled it up this way now it looks like it is done with that fair value gap now hopefully we should see xmr start to move up that would be amazing i'm actually going to check to see if i have a trade on xmr and i do and uh, it's looking quite quite good because I was shorting it, but I was short. I started shorting it from up here, so I may want to start thinking about turning that around, or maybe at least closing it out. I'm not for sure. I'll have to watch onto it the rest, you know, for a little bit and see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like is going to happen. Now we should see some upside to um, to two more narrow. After looking down through here, I really don't see anything that would cause it to come down this way at all. Um, you know, I, I drew that that false, uh, you know, the, what I call the phantom trend line. Um, so what people would think would be a normal trend line. And I said to watch out for that ahead of time. And sure enough, once it got up to a certain point, it, boom, it just fell and uh, smashed anybody's dreams that were trying to trade along that trend line. I feel sorry for anybody that believes in trend lines because that uh, they just don't do what people think they do. There, there's no such thing as trend lines, to be honest. Um, trend lines are basically just a coincidence of you know, order blocks hitting order blocks and the continuation of that. So as you can see right here, this is a bullish order block. This um, but bearish candle here, but then you have a succession of, um, of bullish candles and one finally closes above it. And that would cause that to be an order block. And as you can see, it does come back down and hit it and then move up and then Actually, we have another one here, but I don't even know. I don't think it would drop down to here. But if we did, that it, I mean, if we, if it was to drop, at least we know where it would drop to. It would probably be somewhere around in here because that is where the order block, the next order block is for Monero. So. But I don't think it's uh, going. I don't think that's going to be happening. I think we're going to be start seeing it going the other way. Um. One second here. Sorry, I was actually checking on my Monero uh, trade right now. Making sure I'm doing right by myself. Okay, so I just went ahead and closed it out because uh, <coughs> from here to here was uh, good enough. I want to see what kind of percentage that was really quick. Oh, not date and place range. Just kind of date and place range. So it was, yeah, somewhere around 145 is when it started and it just now ended around one, what was that? Yeah, one around 140, 43, somewhere around there. Uh, so an additional 3%. It said quite a bit more than that because I did have 8x leverage is what I had. So not too bad, not too shabby, can't complain. All right, and after that, uh, we'll go to the, you know, I want to check out Flux to see how Flux was doing, because again, uh, it was one of those ones that uh, did have that huge rise. Again, the other one that uh, people are mining, 
um, okay, saying you can't mine Ethereum anymore. So it looks like it has, it did fall back to those equal lows and I thought it might try to drop below that, it did. And now it looks like it it's hit a bull shorter block. I don't know if it's gonna come off of that bullish order block and come up or try to get below these two equal lows right here. Um, considering that is where liquidity is, it could do that. But then again, if you look over here at this formation, um, again, price does not like to congregate in the same, I mean, it congregate in the same area for a long, long time. So if anything, what it could do is it could drop really quick down into this fair value gap to the 88.6 area, somewhere around there, and then probably jump out really quick. Or um, we could see it drop below this really quick and then jump out really quick. Or we could just see it start moving up. I am not 100% sure. I am just going to have to sit and wait, maybe set a buy limit on this and um, just see and hope and pray it hits it. Um, probably somewhere down here um, and maybe put a smaller one here just in case but um, this does look like it will eventually start rising because you do have two equal highs right here which again means liquidity which means that eventually it will come want to come up here and attack these highs that's what I'm thinking and of course this high too so all right it looks like that's what we got there with algo Again, one of the winners for the week. And it looks like I haven't moved it since it did this. Okay, so it came up, came back down. Oh, I missed it by just a little bit on my prediction, thinking that it would come down here or come down even further. Um, but yeah, it looks like it just hit that where all of that is. So right where that fair value gap is on that one hour, whatever fair value gap it was. So if we actually move it up here where this high is and let's move it to the next low where this guy is. And as you can see, it is making another uh, pullback. Almost gotten to the 50%. And it, look what happens once it gets to the 61.8. It is sitting right on top of those two highs. I mean, that if that's not a coincidence, I don't know what is. That is... <laughs> I mean, that's... I mean, it's purely... I mean that, that that's the algorithm that's smart money right there that is exactly what I'm talking about when I say how the people with a large pockets know how to control um, th these charts um, this is exactly what I'm talking about or else it wouldn't look like this if they didn't know how to control these charts because once it gets down to here um, that is going to be the um, the discount price right so and then it's probably going to drop even lower Right, because you can see a fair value gap right here. If I'll, if anything, I'll draw a little rectangle in here so you guys can see it. Right there, boom. There's a fair value gap right there, just below the 61.8 percent, and it would probably go down all the way to the bottom of that, which would be right at the 70.5, which is another smart money level. Um, hitting about the 33, 34 per, thir 34 cent mark and possibly coming back up after that but the uh, looks like the fair value gap that it did enter it has mitigated so which means it has cleared it on both ways um, on the one hour probably on the four hour as well yeah it's oh it's actually a bullish order block from uh, interesting so short of block from way back when I don't even know where that's from but it looks like it was also a, a larger fair value gap at one point because it came up to it touched it this one came up to it entered it dropped again 
even though there is liquidity down here, I do not see a chart coming down below that. Um, I see algo probably actually moving up further than anything. So that should be interesting. Now let's do that. Oh, let's check out XRP and and then that probably be it. I'm not for sure what this is, but okay. Oh yeah, I think I was looking up uh, some kind of volatility um, indicator, see if I could find one. Really couldn't find one. Well, there is one. It's called Williams Percentage R, and the one I found was not the Williams Percentage R. Oh, they changed it. They changed it to call it Williams Percentage Range. Okay. So. All right, looks like this has had quite a yeah, so that makes sense that this has had quite a bit of volatility recently. Yeah, it looks like it's falling back down. Uh, and then I have a I have this on the daily, right? So on the daily, what I said is you have a fair value gap here. And I thought it would probably get right to the middle of the daily. Maybe even right here because if you look at this formation you have a low high and then it goes down to a lower low so the last high um, the, the last high uh, bullish candle that you have would be this one right here we turn out to be your breaker so it would probably jump down into the fair value gap and then also it could just touch the top of the breaker, get into the breaker, and then jump back out. Or it could fulfill the breaker. Who knows? Um, either way, I think this is what we're going to see. And then once it does that, then we should start seeing more bullish movement um, out of XRP again. Um, so I would look anywhere in between 44.5 and around 42.075, somewhere around there. And uh, after that, we should start seeing some more bullish movement. And then lastly, but not leastly, let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, Zcash. And it looks like it did, uh, it looks like it had two equal lows. Again, it wants to, that is where liquidity lies. So what did it do? That is not, to, you know, where you're, um, uh, God, I can't think of the word because I never use that. I never use the terms. That's why. That's why I can never think of them. Um, that is not where you're not resistance, but the other one. I can't think of it. Uh, don't make fun of me. I can't just because I don't use those those typical retail words. Um, but that is not what it is, all right? So it comes down, jumps through it, and then it runs back up. And then probably this is where all the retail starts chasing it um, because it did poke through um, support. There, that's the word I was looking for, support. So it pokes through support and starts running back up. Retail, start, retail starts chasing it. And as soon as they do, what does smart money do? Boom! drops it like a rock and takes out anybody retail that was trying to trade it up and started buying in he in, in between here and then they probably saw it get down here and then sold off thinking it was going to get lower and then they were had by smart money and smart money is starting to take it back up again so it looks like good things for for some some charts you know um and bad things for others uh, it, it's it's kind of a mixture right now and so crypto is kind of all over the place but um, wherever it's at keep track of it um, and uh, make sure you're paying attention because you never know what's going to happen next until next time uh, keep your pants on